the perfect edit is a myth. On any given photo, there could be any number of subtle combinations, mixes, and variants that would be amazing. I can't tell you how many times over the years I've, I've said, look, don't do a black and white and a color photo. And I can't tell you how many times on a constant basis I see amazing photographers on their Instagram feeds, on their websites, and they literally have the same photo, one in color and one in black and white. And I want you to tell me in the comments right now, what does it mean to you when you see, what do you feel when you see a photo on somebody's site edited in a color and a black and white? I realize there's some latitude on this if you're in like a critique group, right? Where photographers are giving you feedback. But even then, even then it says you weren't ready to publish. I'm gonna show you how to decide today. It starts before you take the photo, that's visualization, right? But sometimes you get to the edit and you're like, no, this looks amazing this way. It's okay to change your direction. What shows that you don't know what you're doing with a photo, where you're going, and that you're not actually ready to publish it is that you take the exact same photo and you publish it in different ways because you don't have the confidence to say, I like this, this is my vision, and this is what I want. It's even worse if you're doing this to a paying client. We're gonna talk about that a little bit, but let's go straight over here first. Here's a photo where the light was pretty harsh, and obviously I need to do something. I'm gonna just walk through and do my normal editing processes on this. So I might bump my exposure a little bit, but I wanna set her off from the background. So I'm gonna to go to something like Elegance and do the portrait AI beauty combo just to quickly run a mask that separates her a little bit. Okay, so we went from here to here. I haven't run a develop preset. All my develop settings are still at zero. What do I wanna do with this? I'm gonna to go to something say like Portra 400, Portra 160. Maybe I'll do an Agfa Flex RSX, right? I, I would do my normal run through where right. I'm, I'm testing, I'm experimenting with different looks. You know that I'm a huge fan of using presets and LUTs in your video and Photoshop actions, because by doing that, you're getting these advanced formulas that took a long time to create and you can quickly try them out and see what works the best. Back in the film days, we took a camera and we had to load the film in the back of that camera and then we were stuck with that roll unless we wanted to lose it. We had to decide before we pressed the shutter what that color blend was going to be. Now we're not as locked in. We have profiles, we can manually edit, we can apply presets. So I'll often come in and say, no, this is a high dynamic range scene. I'm gonna go to natural HDR and try some things. I want a portrait or a street scene. I'm gonna go to film this and try some things. I want a black and white. This image here is one way to edit this. But let's actually take this same image and I'm in Lightroom. You can do this in Capture One or any other, but I'm gonna go Control and quotation mark. And we are going to make a duplicate of this. Okay, so I'm, now I'm making a virtual copy of this and it's the same. What I'm gonna do is click here and we're gonna go to silver. And rather than, again, manually doing this, I'm gonna browse over until I find a black and white preset that just kind of sets her off for this scene. So I'm gonna go through like I normally would. This is kind of intense, but I like what it's doing with the dark. So I'm gonna do the Emulsa 1600 and we have this. Now here are these two images. Which one is better? When I first processed this image, I actually did this as a black and white. And I was like, yeah, I'm fine with that. Over the years, I've learned as I edit to make a decision and run with it. It doesn't mean I can never change my mind, but I'm not gonna take this photo and literally put it side by side in a black and white and a color where there's literally a little gallery and the exact same image is posted just like this. Ah, here's my color, here's my film look at it, and here's my black and white edit. To me, what you're saying, and especially if you do this at a client presentation, right? I've talked a lot in the past, and there's a lot of videos on my channel about doing wall portraits and selling those. If you take an image like this and you don't even know what it is you want to present your client, how is your client gonna have the confidence in you to invest thousands of dollars in your work? At some point, you just have to decide. It's like when you're coming up and you're driving your car, you're coming up and you know that the light's about to turn yellow, but it's not yet. And you can say, no, I'm gonna play it safe. I'm, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna do it. I'm gonna start slowing down now. Or you accelerate a little bit and you go through the light before it changes, right? But in photography, oftentimes we try to put those decisions off on other people. What I'm saying is don't do it that way. 
If we look at this, this is a photo that I actually showed you guys on my blog post. It's very heavily edited with the gold chrome preset test that I was doing a while back. And there's a blog post on this. There's so many ways I could mix this process, right? But I intentionally went with a very strong gold process. Does that mean I should also make one that's just a normal color process? Does that mean I should put a classic negative on this one? Maybe I should do a black and white? No, because I made a decision. But how do you make those decisions better? And I have this street photo of the military on a street corner, right? And so I'm coming through and I'm saying, what's gonna give me the feel of this scene? What was my visualization? A lot of times if I'm shooting, I will switch my camera, especially for street. I will switch over between street uh, black and white and color profiles so that I'm actually thinking and visualizing in that mode. And you can do this on pretty much any camera. Even though I'm shooting raw and not even using those profiles, I'm applying presets in post. I can come in here with confidence and say, no, I'm shooting black and white. No, I'm shooting color. If I want to change my mind later, it's a raw file. I can. But by doing that, black and white is very tone emphasized. You really need the right illumination. If I take this photo here, we kind of have these greens mixing in and they're kind of looking shadily at me and uncomfortable. What do I want this to look like? Do I want it kind of faded? Do I want it intense? Do I want it to be more filmic? Should I do a black and white? A lot of times it comes down to this. The way the light is here, a black and white isn't bad, but to be honest, there's nothing terribly magical about a black and white. And this is what I usually ask myself when I'm making the final decision. If I look at this and I'm saying, well, why is it black and white? Is black and white actually telling a different story? Is it giving me more or am I just desaturating the photo and adding some contrast? When you have bold lines and shadows and things coming together and intersecting, a lot of times black and white is perfect for that. And that's why if you're shooting with black and white in mind, you tend to look for those things. When you're shooting for color, obviously those shadows and those lines are important, but also the way colors contrast each other. I'm gonna go to Filmus and do something like Agfa Flex Vista. Now look at this. This to me feels better. We're seeing kind of that military green contrasted with the background, with the street scene, with the sidewalk colors. If you're just doing black and white to say, oh, I don't like it, I'm gonna make it black and white, you're probably not getting a really amazing black and white. Normally great black and white is done with intent. But I'm also not gonna say, I'm gonna do a gold process on this and a normal-ish color process. When I say normal-ish, I mean, there's no such thing as natural color. Every sensor does it different. Every raw converter interprets differently, whether it's Capture One, whether it's Lightroom, whether it's On One. And so ultimately, think of yourself as the artist. You're painting with the color, the light, the shadow. You're the shadow hunter. And when you use those shadows and light and colors to create contrast, line, and emotion to draw the viewer's attention where you want it, you become in control. And again, I'm gonna come in here and I'm always gonna come in and start with a preset. And you always should, whether you make your own, whether you're using things like my Filmus collection, if you don't have a lot of presets, go to my site right now. I'll put some links in the video description and get at least my free pack of Filmus and some of the other ones that are around the site. Because when you start having formulas, it will transform the way you edit because you're gonna start seeing those nuances between how colors are processed. Just like as film photographers, we had to learn to understand the nuances between this film and that film. And we had to decide, are we shooting Portra? Are we shooting Ektar? Are we shooting black and white? Decisiveness went along with the commitment of film and what it cost. It's easier to be a little less decisive now. I can take this image and it's a great image and I can say, well, do I wanna do something like color or do I wanna to go to black and white? But look what happens. Here's a beautiful image, and if I do this in black and white, it actually isn't that great because I wasn't actually shooting for black and white. I had the greens, I had the blue swimsuit, I had all these things going on, and the light is very soft and a little flat. We don't have this sharp contrast. Sure, I could make a mask. I could use the elegant speed masks and quickly separate the subject from the background and darken down that background. But would it actually make my image better? So there's no reason for me to show this in black and white when I already know that if I do something like this or like this or maybe like this or maybe even something gentle like my new classic Chrome, 
It's just going to look clean and good. And now we're separating. We have kind of that warm and cool. The water is cool. Her flesh tones are warm. The swimsuit is blue. Then if we need to, we can come over here and say, no, I want to warm this up a little bit. Let's just use our sliders and warm it up manually a little bit. Let's do a little more shadow and highlight, etc. Never be afraid to use your sliders. Never ever be afraid to use your presets, your actions. Here's what happens when you're decisive. Instead of just saying, oh, I'm gonna do this version and this version, you put more energy into your edit. So let's say I go back to this image here that I edited as black and white and say, no, this is good as a black and white. I like the way it contrasts. I wanna do more. I can do the add my color back in, in silver. So it's leaving all my process except the color channels. I can now take this in to Photoshop, for example, and spend a little more time on it. So what I've done is I did a black and white. I restored the color because I said, no, I can do even more. I like it in black and white. I'm gonna run the master tool in black room, which is gonna, again, take everything I've done in Lightroom and convert it black to black and white. I only put the color back in so that I have a little more control when I edit it in Photoshop. And I can say, no, let's do some portrait mixes and get some more atmospheric edits on this and do more with it, which of course I can do in Photoshop. The bottom line is whether I'm coming in here and doing manual things or whether I'm coming in here and doing an action like this to give me a really rich, nice black and white atmospheric edit, at the end of the day, I'm in control. So what's happening is by being decisive, I'm not only showing a face to my viewers, my fans, my clients, most importantly, I'm also allowing myself to edit better because I'm not saying, no, I need to do this, but I don't know, maybe I'll also do it this way, but I don't know, maybe I'll also do it this way. Sometimes I actually see photos edited like three different ways and all uploaded in the same feed and that just screams indecisiveness. I've been doing this for over 20 years now and this is something that I learned a while back and that I really learned studying with masters like Kim Whitmire as I studied wall portraiture and as I studied selling and showing that confidence to a client. Whether you're on Facebook or Instagram or in a projection room with a client, if you know what it is that you're trying to create and the more you think in that way, the more you'll start knowing before you even press the shutter and the more you'll carry that through. Imagine you had someone remodeling your bathroom and he came in and he's like, I don't really know what glue to use on the tile, so I'm gonna try all three of these and then I'm gonna let you decide. Would you feel confident in your contractor? It's the same for an artist and you're working for someone else. What you project with your confidence dramatically affects what your viewers feel and see and the confidence of their purchasing decisions. Should I mention that this actually, this mindset is the same if you have 10 different photos that are virtually the exact same pose and just the expression is slightly different? You probably don't need to show all of them. You probably want to have the confidence to select your best. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please hit that like and subscribe button and I'll put some links down below. Head over to the website, join the newsletter so you can get notified of new videos and download some of the pre free presets if you like to play around. We'll see you on the next one.